welcome again to Kathy's Creative Corner. Today I have a very special guest with me. We are in the home of Miss Carolyn Smith Williams. She has very, a very, very beautiful quilts here. Remember a few weeks ago when we were talking about quilts and how the, the quilts were used to single runaway slaves uh, to lead them to the Underground Railroad and how uh, quilts were used to record family history and things like that. Well, uh, Miss Williams is going to show us today some of her quilts and tell us what they mean and uh, how she came to own these quilts. Go ahead, Miss Williams. Well, these things, these quilts have been passed down from my family, you know. I have uh, the oldest record of I, that I have of my great, great, greatest grandmother was born in 1784. And her name was Rebecca Powell. And she came into, from, from Africa through Devonshire, England, and from there to the East Coast, from Virginia um, to the Carolinas to Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and swung through the lower, the northern part of Louisiana up into Arkansas. And she finally made it in 1839 to Arkansas. And she's already, by the census record, she's already 86 when she makes it. Oh my goodness. But she had come through with uh, uh, one family, the Norsworthy family. And so, uh, and that's when she came into Arkansas, which was Harrison Township, right out of Strong. And later on it became New London. Uh, and then after the railroad came through, then it ceased to, New London ceased to be a town. But the same land that she came into Strong as a slave owned, after they were free, they later on became sharecroppers, they don't own um, bought the property, we still own it. That's wonderful. So uh, the things that you will see here in my house represents my family history. Pieces that I kept, even pieces of the house, I kept those pieces, and I always wanted to do it for myself and to tell my children. So these are some of the quilts. You you say uh, uh, pieces of the house and things, and I know the Bible tells us not to destroy the landmarks, and to me, these things like this are landmarks. Would you explain to us about your quilts up here and your display, how they're displayed? Well, uh, I was born and raised in a dog truck house. Uh, that was part of the slave era, the slave uh, houses at that time in New London area, and we call it Ebenezer also. Um, that when they were tearing that house down after I was born, in that house was my grandmother, grandfather, my my dad, my mom, my two brothers, my step, my auntie, her three daughters, and my two uncles, all in the dog trot house, <laughs> and. Um, so later on in the years when they decided to tear it down after they finally were able to buy it, they tore it down. And I thought, well, I want something from that house. So I kept this, this was a seal. It was hand-hewed with a raw wax. And I wanted to keep that. So I displayed it in that manner to swing it from the ceiling and to throw quotes from my great-great-grandmother, my grandmother, and my aunties uh, over that seal. It's a wonderful idea, and that's a way to keep the old man. Yes, I love that. Uh, what about this quilt here? This is a quilt, a pattern that I have always known as trip around the world, uh, or maybe a modified trip around the world. Would you tell us about this quilt? Well, every black family um, had their own funeral quilt, and it was just that because they didn't have flower sprays to put on the coffin, they used and they were handmade coffin, so they used quilts to cover it as they carried it. Most, a lot of times the, the bodies were kept at home until they carried it to the church and from the church to the cemetery. So this was a way to adorn the coffin. And it is, it's a diverse, uh, it's a variation of a trip around the world and the flag. Uh, I like this. When you first unfolded this, I saw the stripes and I thought that reminds me of the flag. Yes. And then you were telling us how it's used as a funeral quilt, and, and this is represents the the spray of flowers. The, instead of flowers, because they didn't have flowers, mm -hmm. could afford to buy flowers, and and so they would they did it. You know, all families may not have had this particular pattern, but there would be a pattern that would fall in the center of the coffin, 
and, and this would drape the coffin until they carried it to the church and from the church to the cemetery and then the families would retrieve the quilt and bring it back home. And that was purpose it served, but it's called funeral quilt. Uh -huh. And tell me about this lining here. This is uh, feed sacks that's uh, um, dyed with root dye and uh, berries. So uh, it's they're just put in here as a back end, sewn together as a back end. They would use cotton, poor cotton, cotton that had not been ginned. And so the seeds are still in here in the cotton, and they would quilt it. And I noticed most older quilts are quilted in a shell pattern, most mm -hmm. of them that I have seen. This one is not, it's right. quilted by the piece. Right. Is not. there a special reason for that? No, it's because you know, it's like when you learn different ways, you try different ways. Yes. Because they are, we're taught as as in early age, the first quote that any black family a child that's raised by a grandmother or a great aunt is taught to peace is a nine patch. Mm -hmm. And the reason for the nine patch is you know that was just a, a representation of there's nine more miles left to go from slavery to freedom, uh, nine more miles before you reach a safe house. Uh, so that's the first quote that black children are taught to peace. But uh, these quotes, and they're always peace, they're always peace in curves, never just a straight line, because evil spirits, it's believed that evil spirits travel in straight lines. So quotes that blacks will ordinarily peace are keep peace in curves, uh, uh, angles, you know, not in a straight line. But to be peace like this is that as you, and when you're around other people who are quoting, then you change your method of quilting for certain purposes. But still, most of the time that blacks quilt, they do not quilt a piece of straight line. They do not quilt in straight line. That's, that's very interesting. But it's a beautiful quilt. Absolutely gorgeous. And, and that's a lot of a lot of in history and information there. And I, 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 I love to learn. <laughs> That, that is just beautiful. I know I've told my audience before that a lot of people made quilts, particularly in the older days, uh, to record their history. Right. A lot of people couldn't, blacks and whites both, couldn't uh, right. read and write, so they would make a piece quilts for their history. And you have one over here that, uh, would you like to talk about that one a little? Well, my great-grandmother, my grandmother, uh, my mom, and myself were all seamstresses, and it's it's not something that that I was taught. I wasn't taught to piece quilt. I wasn't taught to be a seamstress. It was like I tell I tell people all the time as I speak that blacks are natural quilters, whites are trained quilters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, quilters. I, I'll agree with that. But I, I I have told my my audience before. I don't remember ever learning to sew. I just always knew. That's just a God given talent. That, that's me. I just. It's just from watching them, mm -hmm. from watching them do it. You just pick up a needle one day and you just do it. That's that's it. Uh, but you know, I and I, I said that because of the natural cultures or whatever. And I because my grandmother never was taught to sew. It was she she did it out of necessity. You know, she had to. But uh, this quilt right here the, is called the crazy quilt pattern. And it's pieced in blocks. A lot of times, these crazy quilts are pieced solid. Yes. But this is pieced in box, and because it was done over a time, and as the wools, the silks, and the velvets are in this quilt, that was pieces of uh, the of slave owners or sharecroppers on the children's clothing or their clothing that was given, and they were cut and placed in it. And that's why you have the silks, because they couldn't afford to buy the silks and things like that. But that's why you have the silks and uh, velvets. And in here, it has uh, the initials of uh, uh, grandfathers, uncles, cousins who married, and all that is in this quilt. And she, we were told that she didn't have, she could just. I feel so comfortable here. I'm oh, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. I do it all the time. So. Okay. Um, and, and this quilt um, is done by blocks. So it was not done at one sitting or a week or whatever it was probably it took a, a period time. Right. Mm -hmm. and so all these blocks would have different information you have the the williams you have the gills and you have the powells there's a no p for the powell so those are the families 
uh, ties is basically the Williams Guild, the Wilders, so the, the W is not just for Williams, it's for Wilder too, and, and Gills. But it has hands in it. Each hand has a, a little ring, a little yellow band around it to signify that's when Effie and Etta got out. Mm -hmm. You see the ring there. Yeah, that's the ring. And, and this one has a ring on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is my grandfather's initial. I have a great uh, uh, uncle that was born in 1899. He, was, he died in 1999, 14 days before he turned 100. Uh, and you'll see the different, uh, not not necessarily animals, but in Africa. You know that when they came from Africa, they did not forget what they did there or the different uh, habits or rituals that they did. So in Africa, the lizard is considered to be the messenger. And because he can slither and, and go different places without being detected. So they will use these different signals in their quilt, symbols in their quilt. And all the different fancy stitches are exhibited in this book. I've noticed where the blocks are put together, uh, it's all the, the stitches are so different. It's like a feather and stitch. You got the mm -hmm. the the, uh, the bird track, uh, herringbone. Just about all the different stitches, fancy stitches, are uh, exhibited in this book uh, to show up the the talent mm -hmm. of the quilt maker. Right. Yes, that's that's good. And and. It, and uh, if, and, you know, we were always told that the, this is the crazy quilt pattern, you know, you put pieces where they fall, you know, where they fit. And that it was, the thought behind it was, it was really crazy to think that you could run from slavery to freedom. Speaking of running from slavery to freedom, let's talk a little bit about the Underground Railroad. Yes. Uh, I've read that quilts were used to signal the uh, slaves, the runaway slaves. Uh, can you tell me anything about that? Yes. Um, uh, one of the quotes that uh, I have here I think is the, the best example of how to send, how the uh, signals were used, quotes were used to send the signal is uh, the log cabin quote. A true log cabin quote, a true log cabin quote is always pieced in light and dark colors, and you can see that. It has a dark corner, it has a light corner. Now that's mm -hmm. a true log cabin quilt. Now they piece them all kinds of ways using all kinds of fabric, but a true log cabin quilt is always pieced in light and dark colors. And it'll have the, the dark corner, it has a light corner. If this quilt was hanging on the root, and a lot of times they would display other quilts uh, stem, uh, the signals would stem from church, places like the church because most blacks definitely attended church. Yes, I and so that. everything centered around the church. So since this was hanging in a manner to uh, let slaves know that we're planning the trip to run from slavery to freedom, if it was hanging in this manner with the dark ends pointed toward the ground, is what we're going to run at sundown. That's, that's the that's very interesting. And if you flipped it around. I think we flipped it too far. <laughs> okay. I'm not okay. far enough. Okay. Not far enough. Okay. Okay. Now, you see the difference. Now, the light ends are pointing towards the ground. If it's uh, ha hanging in this manner, the light ends were running and sun up. So okay. that was a way that the, that person that was going to uh, lead them uh, from to the run to make, make connections on the underground railroad would know the difference in, in how to read the quote. So I always tell people, the, this quote, the log cabin, shows the best signal of any other, and, and the saying, you know, you don't know the difference between light and dark, of black and white or whatever, so. Okay. Uh, but this this is the best signal quote to me. My grandmother pieced this one, and she did, she pieced it. She did not quilt it, and I have let it remain the way she left it. I don't blame you. This is why she left it. So uh, it, it's a beautiful quilt, and it's not just a, a design. It's a, it has a meaning. It, it has a meaning. Mm -hmm. It's a messenger quilt. Yes. And I know I have done some research on quilts, and uh, different quilt patterns have different meanings. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about that? 
Well, if other you, than the log cabin. Oh uh, well, if you use the uh, now the uh, the bow tie quilt was not necessarily a signal quilt, but it had a meaning in the black and the black community, African American, Negro, whichever one you want to say, that um, it would mean to be extra careful because someone. Had, that had been a necktie party, which means someone had been harmed along the way. Okay. And it just sent the mission of being cautious. Um, the uh, the uh, flower garden, if it was hanging, there's food or clothing hidden in the garden, whether it was a garden that was close or a flower garden that was close, that just lets you know there's food hidden or clothing hidden. Uh, I noticed uh, what, right after we came in, you showed us three flower, uh, flower, garden, flower quilt. garden quilts. Yes. And I, I wondered, oh, why so many flower garden quilts? Okay, now I know. Yeah. But that would let the, the runaway slaves know there was food or clothing hidden. Well, that, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, and, and because I, I have those three because my, my grandmother had the two daughters. Mm -hmm. And so they always pieced, you know, you, uh, my grandmother had hers first and then the, the, the next daughter was, was Aunt Lucy had hers and then my mom Louise so would have had hers. And so that's why most of them were done in threes. That's that's okay. That's that's fine. Uh, do you have anything else you want to tell us about quilts? That you know, that to me, for a person, it's it's such a, it has such a therapeutic meaning. You know, I spent two and a half years in, in a wheelchair, okay. and I did um, uh, a needlepoint quilt. I did needlepoint, and that taught me the patience. It taught me. The, the strength and, and kept me, you know, kept my hands limb underneath, my fingers uh, loosened to the point that I didn't use a loose use of them. And uh, but that was my therapy. That was my therapy. And uh, by doing that, uh, VA adopted that for others who would want to quote. Other than that, you know, they hadn't had a quote, and uh, people who didn't want to go through therapeutic program, a rehabilitation program for quoting. After I started doing that. And VA decided, you know, this is therapeutic, and for those who want to enjoy it and keep the use of their fingers or their limbs, then this is fine. Would you tell me what VA means? I mean, Veterans I, Administration. I understand, but <laughs> okay. I want, my, I want okay. the audience to The know. Veterans Administration. Okay. Yes. And mm -hmm. why were you involved with the Veterans Administration? I'm a disabled vet. I'm a disabled vet. I want to thank you for that. <laughs> Not being disabled, yeah. but for being yeah. a vet. And that was, my, that was my therapy and also uh, for rehabilitation, and that's basically, I didn't start doing any of this, you know, for others to see, not even the collection of things, it was just, that was my way, that was my way of remembering my past, you know, where, how the things that my grandparents or great-grandparents and my mom uh, had come through. Uh, so I just kept it, and it just kept growing and growing and growing, and here we are today. And God has his ways of uh, making things grow for us yes. to, to give him glory and to share with others and to help others. And I have so thoroughly enjoyed this time with you. Uh, I wish I had met you sooner. <laughs> <laughs> but quilts are so fascinating. Yes. And yes. as I've told you before, they, they're more than just something to keep you warm at night. And when, uh, with a quilt like this, with the pool cotton or even the cotton that the ladies would purchase for a quilt, the quilts had to be quilted so much closer together than they do nowadays. And why was that, Miss Williams? You know, they, it was, they were done for endurance, you know, the test of time. So you didn't loosely do it because you didn't have to, my grandmother would say, if you do it right the first time, you don't have to redo it. So uh, that's why they quilted them tight because it was there to stay. It was there to stay, especially in the flower garden quote that I showed you mm -hmm. earlier. They were meant to stay. Yes. Uh, the polyester fiber fill you use nowadays, it's lighter weight. Yes. It's really more comfortable for a cover, but that you lose so much yes. in doing that, and they don't have to be quilted near so close. But I have just enjoyed this so much. I thank you so much for inviting us into your home. Uh, maybe we can do another show together oh, sometime, and you can tell me exactly. about your uh, table in your dining room. Oh, yes. Can yes, you yes. Give us a brief description of that. Uh, because 
I wanted to preserve everything that I, mm -hmm. it, was, it's, it was just important for me to preserve. So that, my table is the door out of the grandparents, Chef Robert's house. Oh, nice. So all I did was uh, add legs, some legs to it. Not, not out of new wood or anything, but out of wood that came out of the house too. But that's the door out of the Chef Robert's house. And that's an amazing story. <laughs> and that is one way to preserve the landmarks and not to destroy them and to pass our history on down to our children. Yes. I hope you have enjoyed this program today as much as I have enjoyed it. And I hope to have Miss Williams on another show where we can talk about other things <laughs> from her history. I thank you for joining me today. And until next time, have a good week. I want to read something to you that I wrote several years ago what I see in my quilt. I sew the lyrics of a songwriter. I assist the words of the poet. I quilt the voice of the singer. I piece the patterns of life. I cover the world with love. I am the thread from the past. I am the stream to the future. My needle is the brush stroke of the painter.